Let's find the exact value of these inverse trigonometric functions. And every time I start one of these, I think to myself, what's the range of the inverse trigonometric function that I'm dealing with? So for this first one, I have to think to myself, well, what's the range of inverse sine? And well, inverse sine can only tell me angles between minus pi halves and positive pi halves. And the way I like to think about that is inverse sine can tell me negative angles in quadrant four or positive angles in quadrant one. Well, sine's negative in quadrant four, so this inverse sine of a negative number should be one of those quadrant four angles. Because the other thing I guess I can always secretly think about is that here I'm dealing with an angle and I'm really looking for the angle where the sine of theta is equal to mi minus root two over two. All right, well definitely, if I'm only picking between quadrants one and two, sine's ne excuse me, quadrants one and four, sine's negative only in quadrant four. So I need one of those angles down there and a negative angle. And I now know that this has to be a minus pi fourths just thinking about those unit circle values or my special right triangle values. All right, so inverse cosine. If I think about inverse cosine, its range is from zero to pi. Thinking about only positive angles in quadrants one and two. Cosine's positive in quadrant one and negative in quadrant two, so if I'm thinking about this as an angle, because it's an angle, I'm really looking for the angle in quadrant two where cosine is equal to minus root three over two. All right, so I'm looking for a second quadrant angle where cosine is equal to minus root three over two, and that has to be five pi over six. All right, nice happy positive value here in inverse tangent, but it's still nice to remember what the range for inverse tangent is. And it's a lot like the one for sine, except for we can't include the values at pi halves or minus pi halves because that's where we have those horizontal asymptotes. And for the tangent function, we have vertical asymptotes. All right, so again, I'm thinking about angles either in quadrant one or four, negative angles in four, positive angles in one, tangents positive in quadrant number one. And so the inverse tangent of one, well, that's pi fourths. That's that nice spot in my unit circle where the ordered pairs root two over two comma root two over two. So where I put y over x, I just get one. The inverse tangent of one, positive pi over four. All right, here I'm dealing with the inverse secant of two root three over three. And in a lot of um, trigonometry courses and a lot of pre-calculus courses, you don't actually see a definition of inverse secant written down, but we can still think our way through this problem. So if I had never met inverse secant before, I could write it down as a secant, right? Just thinking about what inverse functions should do. And then I remember a secant is a one over a cosine. All right, so I could take the reciprocal of both sides of that equation and cosine theta would be three over two root three. And if I simplify that, I have root three over two. So if I'm thinking about this problem, secant inverse of two root three over three, I'm really looking for a place where cosine theta is equal to root three over three. I could even translate that back into an inverse trig function problem. All right, and that lets me think about the range of inverse cosine, which should match in some way the range of inverse secant, and I think everything would work out well. But in looking at these two, I realize where the reciprocal happens, right? It happens on the inside. And I could always write it out like this, and that way I make sure I get that reciprocal correct. But now I'm really just looking for the inverse cosine of root three over two. I'm looking for a place in the first quadrant where cosine is equal to root three over two, and that's pi sixths. All right, we've evaluated some inverse tri trigonometric functions, and that's it for now.